Hello and welcome everybody. Um, my name is Irma and this is the place on the internet where I talk about all the things I make, mostly knitting. And I have some things I want to show you. Um, they're all knitting. No, that's not true. They're mostly knitting. Um, and I finished some things which I want to show you. And the first two things are... Um, new costumes so I uh, haven't showed this the previous video those were both cast on afterwards and as you can see they are very tiny and I'm going to show you this one is already blocked and I don't know if you can see but this is a little baby trousers um, which is a little bit uh, with short rows the back is made a little bit higher up than the front which makes it easy to fit a diaper in <laughs> and there is a little gusset uh, in between the legs to make room over there and I'm very very happy with this pattern I will put a pattern in the description box I don't know by heart who designed it, it it's it's a pay for pattern but not a very expensive pattern and it goes up to I think the two or three year olds so there are quite some sizes in there uh, I made the second size which is for approximately three to six months depending on how um, fast your child grows uh, it's for a friend of mine who had uh, who had a baby and uh, yeah I'm very very happy with it I find it very very cute and this will be too big now although it's very small but <laughs> it will be too big now I think but it will be nice this coming winter so that's a uh, new custom and finished object in one And I made something else. I had a bit of little bit left over from the uh, next project I'm going to show. It's a uh, alpaca wool blend, and I made this very tiny but very stretchy um, hat. And it looks very strange <laughs> when you hold it like this, but it's as I said, it's very very stretchy. Uh, and when you stretch it sideways the length from top to bottom will become smaller as you can see so I think it will be a very nice shape I need to block this so it will be neater when I oh there's a line of sunlight <laughs> in my frame I only just noticed um, yes yeah, so it will be a little bit neater and nicer after I block it which I will do this afternoon um, I did not use a pattern I just casted on the amount of stitches I was guessing was right I did look up the head sizes of babies like the most common head sizes <laughs> I don't know how to say that but the average that's the word I'm looking for the average um, head size of babies um, and I think because there is so much stretch in here it can fit over a tiny head with room left and when the baby grows it will stretch out and it will be have less space on top so I think it will be uh, very wearable and it will be the baby will be able to wear it a long time as I said I did not use pattern I just I think I cast it on let me calculate I think I cast it on a hundred and forty four stitches on a two millimeter needle and I did a two by two rib and at a certain point I started decreasing which I did all in the same direction and I started with every four row and then I changed it to every third row 
every second row and a few rows every row and then at the top it looked like it would become like a point which I didn't want so I started decreasing um, on 8 places instead of 4 places so that's only for the very top part which you won't even notice when you're wearing it yeah and uh, I hope the baby is not allergic most babies aren't but you never know <laughs> and otherwise there will be another child that can enjoy this little hat and I want to, to make one more thing I think in this same yarn because when I was knitting it it's so soft I was knitting with it and I was like oh that would be very nice socks but there's no um, reinforcement uh, fiber in there like silk or um, nettle or um, nylon or something like that but then I was thinking yeah but babies don't walk on their feet they only have to be soft and warm and cute so there's no point in making socks that are reinforced because they do not wear that much this is a sock yarn but I was thinking the baby is laying on his back and when it's going to roll over on his front so this gets somewhere but socks really don't so I'm going to try to make uh, some very cute baby socks out of this yarn so he has a uh, trousers, a hat and matching socks to the hat uh, I want to make socks that are without a heel and I did some searching for it you can spiral your ribbing that's essentially most of the patterns I found so you can spiral your uh, ribbing and when you do that you get a sock that's very stretchy and um, you can accommodate a heel without knitting a heel in I've never tried it before but I've seen some very nice examples and with babies the feet are so different in size that I really um, didn't want to take the risk that I would knit a very small cute sock that wouldn't fit or only would fit the baby for like a month so I was thinking I would make like a little bit longer tubes in the spiraled ribbing which will be like a sock but you can wear it longer that's my idea I don't know <laughs> if it's gonna work but I'm going to try it and I will show you next time if I won't be able to show you before I finish them I will make a photo so I can show them because um, maybe I will be able to gift the presents in between the next recording and the finishing of the socks so we will see but I will show you definitely how that works out and also if it doesn't work out I will tell you why it didn't work out so that's a plan that's a new um, project I'm going to work on and I have another finished object which is this cardigan I did crochet squares, I attached them all, I did that with a, not a single crochet, but a slip stitch crochet, does that, does that even, all my knitting I do in English terms, my crochet I learned in Dutch. And I also always have to translate back to Dutch, if it makes sense. And the English terms are different from the American terms, so that's always very confusing for me. But what I essentially did is I took the inner loop of both um, edges I want to attach. I put my crochet hook through picked up the thread and put it through all the loops on my needle so I did not um, put it through the first loops and then to the next two loops but I put it through all loops 
directly and because I took only the inner loops of the edges you get a very flat finish which I really like in this um, cardigan so that's what I did I then you can see I did not finish all my ends uh, not weave in all my ends I did uh, weave in all the ends at the edges and on the inside of the squares because I don't know if you crochet and if you have ever noticed this problem but when you start a square with a magic loop beginning there is a little bit stretch in that center and I have made some blankets that I did not secure the inside uh, thread, leftover thread good enough so it started to unravel from the inside and crochet is nearly impossible to fix from the inside so um, and I didn't want that in this cardigan so I secured all the ends of the insides of the squares and I will deal with all those other ends when I want to because I had a lot of threads to weave in I think there are over a hundred squares in this cardigan and I had uh, more than uh, that amount of threads to weave in and I was done with it <laughs> so it will be secure it will be wearable no one will see the inside all the edges are woven in so there will no will be no threads speaking out while wearing and I think that's the most important part so yeah I picked up um, threads from the um, stitches from the edge and I did that continuously so let me see how I can show that this is the bottom and then I picked up stitches from the front and from the neckline and the back and then back over the shoulder to the front and back to the bottom edge so it's one continuous loop and at the corners on the bottom I did a increase so I increased on the left and on the right of the stitch until I had the width I wanted and then I flipped over I want to be have a double uh, hem so then I decreased at the same in the same way at the inside so you get that nice corner on the bottom and I really like how that went as I said I did a fold over ribbing hem thingy so I knit the width I wanted I knit the buttonholes in there and then uh, when I had the width I wanted I knit a row completely in purl stitches which makes a kind of a fold over edge and then I knit the same width again in a on a needle size smaller so it would be a little bit smaller than the outside and then I picked up stitches on the inside of the bottom bands and knit those together with a stretchy bind off let me think which stretchy bind off I used because I used a stretchy bind off on this one which I really like it has no flare or everything or anything but it really stretches out very nice this one was done with twisting your needle I will see if I can find a link to this method method anywhere because it's it's confused me a bit like how will this make it more stretchy but you put a little bit extra twist in your stitch so that makes it a little bit there is a little bit more yarn so a little bit more room to stretch and it doesn't flare out which I really like I think when I would do bottom up socks I will use this bind off but for this one it was really important that I had um, all the stretch I could get so I used the stretchiest 
bind off I could think of and I think it's mm, instead of taking the previous stitch over your new stitch when you're binding off instead of taking the stitch over you knit them together and that also gives more yarn in the stitch so more stretchiness and it gives enough stretch so my squares could stretch the amount they need and my um, ribbing stretches with that because I think I did the bind off three times and the first two times it was just too stiff and I wanted a snug fitting cardigan I will put it on in a minute um, and I crocheted the amount of squares to accommodate that but when you put your ribbing on and your ribbing doesn't stretch then the cardigan doesn't fit like I want it anymore so I had to do it three times and you only know how it because it was one continuous loop of stitches I could only test it when I was almost completely finished with the bite off so it was quite a struggle but I'm happy I did it again and again and again <laughs> because otherwise it wouldn't have fit the way I wanted it so I'm going to put it on uh, oh I did the same folding over at the um, bands on the arm the ribbing at the arm so that's very nice uh, the sleeves are shorter on purpose I could have add in more squares at the arms but I really wanted a little bit shorter sleeves because I also like put my sleeves up like this a lot so it would be less bulky if I just make made the sleeves uh, smaller I let me see I did have to make the buttonholes two times on the outside of the ribbing and on the inside of the ribbing and I was thinking maybe I should attach them in some way to each other but it I don't need it you can just it's it fits perfectly so I'm very happy that I did not have to bother with putting more ends to weave in there let me see it's quite a long not extremely long but it's quite I'm buttoning I always have that I always start at the wrong point when I'm trying to button up a cardigan every time I always have to do it twice let me start at the bottom then I know I have the most outer one. Oh, oh, oh. Let's speed this up because you don't want me to button a cardigan on real life speed, right? <laughs> so now I did it right. <laughs> the right way. I will stand up this little edge. Let me see. To show you how long it is. So it's like over the hips. And I think it's a perfect length to wear on trousers or uh, skirts or whatever. But it's covering enough to make it uh, easy to wear. I do like cropped things, but I always notice that it's a little bit harder to match it with every outfit. So I'm very happy that I chose this length. I'm very happy with where the neckline uh, starts with the buttons I don't know if you can see but I really like these buttons can you see there's a little flower in there so cute so yeah I'm very happy um, with this I'm thinking about writing down the pattern although it's not something new I think there it's a very old technique to make clothing out of crochet squares so it's nothing new also the I think I'm quite sure that there are other people that did the knitted knitted edge so that's also not really new the way I did the bottom with the increasing in the corner 
I haven't seen before, but it's also not new. But I also know that not everybody is able to um, construct it on its own. So maybe I'll, it will, won't be like a pattern in a way like cast on this amount and do it exactly like this, but more like a recipe. Because also like w the way I started is I measured my circumference, uh, the widest part. So for me that's over my boobs. I um, measured that and I need a square that I think would be a nice size for the squares. You can make them bigger for a different look. You can make them smaller for a different look. And I divided the circumference by the size of the squares, if that makes sense. And I left over a bit because I wanted snug and I knew the button band would fit in there. But it's very hard to make it fit the same on every body unless you do the calculations. So maybe I will make a recipe out of it. So you have to put a little bit more time in it. But I will take you through step by step how to construct it. You can um, play with uh, how much ease there is. You can play with the width of the button bands to make it a little bit different and as I said the size of the squares uh, gives the cardigan a different look you can uh, lengthen the sleeves so that's something I'm thinking about because I do like the effect I do like helping people to figure things out and maybe that's just the perfect way to write it down is like in a recipe this is how you can construct your own and you can use any square for that like I used a very closed square so there is no much there are holes in the corners but for the most part it's completely covered but you can also use a lace square for this so that's something I'm thinking about I do take it off now because it's quite warm still here in the Netherlands. I think we have 20 degrees. I know 20 degrees Celsius is not like hot to most people. It's not really hot, but it's warm enough to make me a little sweaty in a alpaca cardigan. So I will just take it off for now. Um, I really like the feel of this yarn. The pink one is dyed by me and the grey is the undyed yarn. And I al always have a soft spot for undyed yarns. I really like <laughs> natural colored yarns and I'm a dyer for yarn, which is strange. I do like the colors as well, I'm just kidding. but. I also really appreciate the um, natural colors and I really like this grey. So yeah, this um, took a lot of time but it came together faster than I would have thought. The most time was in attaching the squares and weaving in the ends. I think that was, and of course doing a bind of three times. but. <laughs> um, that's just my problem with how I wanted it to fit. But yeah, it's a lot of weaving in ends when you make something from squares. And that is something you know when you start it. And I really like the effect. And I think I will wear it a lot. It will be a shop sample. Uh, also to feel how the yarn behaves when it's crocheted and knitted. Because it's both in the same cardigan. So that's nice. Um, let me think of other projects I am working on. I did found, so I'm going to cast on the, the socks without the heel. But I also found something else. I do have quite some work in progress, I have to confess. You did not see every project last time. I do have more <laughs> and once in a while there will be a new one popping up. 
so they're not new they're old but you haven't seen them maybe so i think three years ago three years ago oh my god it's a shame um i knitted those kind of gloves for or mittens those are not gloves gloves have the fingers those are mittens i knit this kind of mittens in my size in different colors than this i think i chose like a dark red and a brownish gray i knit those for myself i still enjoy them i love them um, and i cast it on a pair for my husband and as you can see i have a one finished one although it's not completely finished it still has no thumb so it's almost finished I always do the thumbs when I have both gloves so I can make sure that I made a left and a right one before I finish them off. And I have started the second one last year so I finished this one, I put it away, I didn't finish it, I took it out again and I think last year I just did not knit on it, I don't know. Maybe it's two years, but I think it's already three years. And I still didn't finish it. So my goal is <laughs> to finish this before winter comes. Like before it's really, really cold. Not that it gets minus 10 or something over here. It stays around freezing point. But I think that's cold enough to wear mittens. So uh, that's my goal, to finish this before it gets cold enough to wear them and it should be easy enough because there are like let me count I think there are like 50 stitches in the circumference this one had 144 and I finished it in a few days so this shouldn't take too much time of course it's color wash so you have to look at the chart and it's a little bit less mindless than knitting two by two rib but still this should have been finished ages ago it's a pattern by skein deer knits it was in one of the mitten clubs i don't know if she sells the patterns on their own or that you still have to buy the complete set and these those are called the Effie mittens if I remember well always check the description box if you want to know something for sure I really love this pattern I reverse the dark and the light color for this one I do really like to do that in color work mixing up the dark and the light colors and I think those are suited for men in my opinion everybody can wear everything they want but um, yeah I think my husband wouldn't walk in something too flowery but I think this will be um, okay for him and there are very very um, warm and wooly and um, I think you will enjoy it it's knitted out of the so I was cut off my camera stops after recording for half an hour which is annoying and I still have to look if I can change the settings but I don't know where I was I think I was talking about the yarn it's Navia Duo I find it on the label it's standing there it's Duo so it's a two ply um it's very wooly very scratchy it's from the Faroe islands they do have more sheep than people there so yeah funny detail um yeah i really yeah i really like it and i think it's a nice project um after those two which were both quite plain to have something to work on with a little bit more color work in it I don't know how much time I have to work on these um, in the evenings for sure after I finish the socks um, but the um, 
uh, Breidagen, the yarn event, is in three weeks. Do I say that right? I think so. So I do have a lot of, as you can see, there's a lot of yarn lying here. It needs to be labeled. It needs to, a lot of stuff needs to happen. So I don't know how much time I actually have, but I do hope to get a little bit of knitting done on those mittens because I am ashamed of myself that they are lying around for three years. Oh my God. Okay, I think that's everything I have to talk about for now. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching and I will see you next time. Bye.